Welcome all grade 8 students to the Science Nest YouTube channel. Today we are going to learn about the first lesson Importance of Microorganisms. First of all, we have to take an idea who are microorganisms. The unicellular, that means single celled or multicellular, Organisms which are invisible to the naked eye when taken individually are called microorganisms. This is the definition for microorganisms. They may be unicellular, that means some microorganisms have composed with only one cell, and some are multicellular, that means they have composed with two or more cells, and also we can't see them from our naked eye. So we have to use an equipment to see them. These microorganisms can be observed clearly through microscope. This is the figure of a microscope. These microorganisms can be found in every habitat on the earth. They live and thrive in all environments such as atmosphere, water, soil, in and on living organisms including hostile environments hostile environments means very harsh environments like glacier, glaciers deserts hot springs deep sea and saline environments in those kind of environments any other organisms cannot live and thrive but the microorganisms can live and thrive in those type of hostile environments they differ in their morphological characters as well as in their feeding mechanisms. So there are various types of microorganisms in our environment. Now we are going to learn about various, various types of microorganisms. Now you can see in this picture, these are called bacteria, yeast, chlamydomonas is a type of algae, muca, a type of fungi, amoeba and paramecium the dutch scientist anthony van leeuwenhoek observed microorganisms for the very first time in 1674 using a simple microscope that he has invented now we are going to learn about the effects of microorganisms on food effects balapam the growth of some microorganisms on food makes the food not suitable for consumption. If there is a microbial growth on those, those food, we can't use those food. The microbial activities change the taste, nutritional value, color, texture, odor and appearance of food. Due to those changes, the food becomes unfavorable for consumption due to the microbial activity is called food spoilage this is the definition for food spoilage food become unfavorable for consumption due to the microbial activity is called food spoilage in this practical we are going to see how we can see how we can observe the microorganisms on food you will need a slice of bread some water a gla glass slide a cover slip microscope the method is spray some water on the slice of bread and keep it for three days take some food some of the substance grown on the slide of bread and place on the glass slide glass slide is the is a glass equipment we use to place the specimen we are going to see from the microscope put a drop of water on it cover the slide with a cover slip observe the slide through the microscope under the low power then we can see the observation in this figure slice of bread with fungi and the fungi can be seen from the microscope like this in the previous picture you have seen that there are some fibers and black structures on bread they are a kind of fungi which spoils bread now we will see what is the conclusion of this experiment. The main reason for food spoilage is the growth of microorganisms on food and release of their byproducts. 
that is the conclusion of this experiment we have seen uh, the food has spoiled because of the microorganisms now we will do another activity to study about the microbial activity in this activity you will need sugar yeast a balloon warm water about 40 celsius a bottle with 500 milliliter a beaker or suitable container the method is dissolve two teaspoons of spoons of sugar in 200 milliliter of warm water add one teaspoon of yeast into the above sugar solution now we have mixed the sugar and the yeast leave it for about 20 minutes and observe next pour a newly prepared solution into the bottle then fix a balloon to the mouth of the bottle record your observation after about 20 minutes in this practical there are several observations so we will see them separately one by one the first observation when sugar and yeast are mixed in a solution it will bubble and become warm you will smell the odor of alcohol also then we will see the conclusion for that observation the ethyl odor is causing because of the ethyl alcohol ethyl alcohol is produced due to the activity of yeast in the sugar solution next observation the balloon has been inflated the conclusion for that a gas is produced due to the activity of yeast in sugar solution. In the first observation also, I have mentioned that it will bubble and become warm. It will bubble. This bubbling process is happening due to the gas evolving. That gas is carbon dioxide. You know that yeast is a key ingredient in bakery products. Key ingredient means most essential ingredient in bakery products the activity of yeast forms carbon dioxide and makes the dough rise ethyl alcohol evaporates during the process of baking that is the baking process moisture and temperature are the main factors that contribute to microbial activity moisture that means the wet nature and we will see what is the most suitable temperature for the microbial growth food spoils rapidly at room temperature that means the temperature from 25 celsius to 30 celsius this is because room temperature is favorable for microbial growth that is the most suitable temperature for the growth of microorganisms when the microorganisms are growing on the food, they secrete enzymes to the food. The enzymes produced by these microorganisms change the taste, order, color, texture and the nutritional value of the food. So we can't take them for our consumption. But if the food is refrigerated, the microbial activity is minimized because the amount of moisture and temperature are controlled in the refrigerator. Moisture and temperature are the factors that control in a refrigerator. There are special names for the microbial activities depend on the type of food. Fermentation. That means microbial activity on food high in sugars. Putrefaction microbial activity on food high in protein we call it as putrefaction rancidity microbial activity on food high in fats is called rancidity instead of the moisture a substrate suitable temperature and ph ranges are the factors for the growth of different microbes Therefore, microbial activity can be controlled by controlling these factors. Impacts of microorganisms on humans and their activities. We will see what are the impacts. Balapam. Some microorganisms are beneficial to humans while some are harmful. 
Now we will see what are the beneficial effects of microorganisms. Microorganisms use in different industries. We will see what are those industries. Producing curd, producing cheese, producing yogurt, producing vinegar and alcohol, producing antibiotics, food, that means mushroom, producing bakery, producing vaccines, co-industry, and producing biogas. Those are the industries we use microorganisms. Another beneficial effect of microorganisms is they can decompose dead plant and animal matter. They can decompose. Decompose dirapat karna. They can decompose the dead plant and animal matter. If not, these matter get collected and it affects the balance of the environment. That means there may be so many dead plant and animal matter if there is no microorganisms to decompose them. Next beneficial effect is they are also used to control pests. Pests are the uh, harmful insects. Harmful insects for the crop products are called pests. This is a biological control method of pests. That means we can control pests by using microorganisms without using any kind of chemical. So we call it as biological control method. It is very environmental friendly method for controlling pests. There are some figures of the pest for the crop products. Let's learn about the harmful effects of microorganisms. Microbial activity causes food spoilage. The food spoiling process is happening due to the microorganisms. You can see in this picture the growth of microorganisms on vegetables. Growth of microorganisms on bread and growth of microorganisms on fruits. So we cannot use these fruits, bread or vegetables for our usage. Causing infectious diseases for man is another adverse effect of microorganisms. Infectious diseases mean the diseases causing by the activities of the microorganisms. These are some virus diseases common called dengue AIDS that means acquired immune immunodeficiency syndrome that is the long form of AIDS. Next, bacteria diseases, tuberculosis, leprosy, and typhoid fever. Protozoan diseases, malaria, leishmaniasis, amoebiasis. Fungal diseases, petriasis, and so. You can see a figure of the leprosy. This is the symptoms of leprosy. Symptoms of petriasis, symptoms of leishmaniasis. Next adverse effect is causing infectious diseases for animals. A dog suffering from hydrophobia, jalabitikawa. A bull suffering from foot and mouth disease. The symptoms of foot and mouth disease in bull are fever, blisters in the mouth and on feet, drop in milk production, weight loss. Likewise, there are so many other symptoms in this disease. A cow suffering from mastitis. A cow suffering from mastitis. In this disease, we can see in the body of the cow, there are some swellings in the body. We will see the next adverse effect, causing infectious diseases for plants. You can see a potato plant with blight. The apex of the potato plant has dead. Papaleus with mosaic disease. Chili plant with leaf curled disease. Those are the diseases caused for the plants by microorganisms. 
The last harmful disease we have to learn about is damage caused due to the growth of microorganisms on surfaces of objects. These effects are mostly caused by fungi. You have seen fungi on clothes. You have seen fungi on walls and also you have seen fungi on wooden surfaces in your houses. That's all about the lesson number one in grade eight. Thank you for watching the channel and subscribe the channel and click the bell icon to see more videos related to you.